Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're gonna to be going over concentric bends. Before we get started, I wanna give a disclaimer before everybody jumps on the comments. When you do a concentric bend, you're gonna be doing a lot of the same bends on one pipe. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is figure out how your bender works and if you need to compensate for it. These benders get abused on our job site, so they're not always perfectly true to the degrees that you put in. I'll get started, I just wanted to get that out of the way before we get too far. With a concentric bend, usually we're having to fit a smaller pipe um, near a, a bigger pipe that has a larger radius. A good example is if you have a nice big curve like these pipes on the table, uh, that's kind of how your three inch pipes will look. But if you have a small pipe like, the, like this three quarter, usually it's a sharp 90. One of the most important things before we get started is that you understand the math that you're gonna do when you do this type of bend. Um, we can talk about pi and radiuses, but in all reality, the number that you need to remember is 1.75. You're gonna be multiplying that with the radius that you're gonna use. So for me, I'm gonna be fitting a pipe in between uh, my little gap right here. I have one three quarter pipe already, and then I got the side of uh, this border here. The size of radius that I'm gonna be using is a 22 inch radius. So after I do my math, 22 times 1.57, that gives me a developed length of 34.54. Uh, so if you look here on my pipe, what I wanna do is put two marks and that's gonna be the full distance of the developed length. So I got one mark right here at the top. And if you look at my tape measure, fully extended 34 and a half. So after I have those two marks um, set in there, I want to decide how many segments I want this bend broken up into. So I can either do 18 bends at five degrees each. If you do that math, that's 90 degrees. If you want um, nine bends, that's 10 degrees each. I think that'd be easiest for us. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna get my full develop length of 34.54. Uh, I'm gonna get my calculator. Uh, I said nine is the amount of bends I wanna do. I don't wanna use that number because we're looking for the in-between measurements of those nine bends. So uh, I wanna take one off, let's go with eight. So it'll be 34.54 divided by eight. That equals 4.31, which adds up to about five, uh, four inches and five sixteenths. And the reason I put both bends to begin with is because as I'm measuring four and five sixteenths over and over, my last mark should line up with the first two that I did. So if you look here, four and five sixteenths, four and five sixteenths, Okay, and so on. And like I said, I have nine marks because I'm gonna do nine bends. So after you mark up your pipe, go ahead and put it in your triple nickel. Us, we're using a Greenlee uh, 854 DX. It's a little bit nicer because you can actually set what degrees you're gonna stop on. So let me get this all the way in there first. So if you look, my first line is gonna be on the edge of my hook. And I have already went through the trouble of seeing if my bender is bending perfectly. It's not. When I set it to a degree, it's usually two degrees off. So I'm gonna compensate for that. Um, earlier, I, I told you guys uh, 90 divided by nine is 10. So 10 degrees is what I want it to be bent to. So I'm gonna set it to 12 for that compensation to be taken care of. Look, we're lined up. And I'm gonna just hold my bender till it's at degrees and it stops. I do my first bend and then I grab a no dog. This no dog helps keep my pipe straight so that whenever I'm doing multiple bends, I don't have a pipe that's uh, 
going in multiple directions. It stays a true 90 the whole way through. And the reason I put it on now is because the pipe is already at its final bend state. So this is what level would be for every other bend after this. Um, after I know that this is nice and level, I'm gonna loosen it. I'm just gonna push my pipe right on through. And on your no dog, you're gonna have a little leveling uh, window. You wanna make sure that that's level before you commit to the full bend. And we're just gonna keep repeating these steps. We wanna make sure that we take our time. You may need two hands to roll it into place. And if it is too tight, you can always loosen it. So for the very last bend, I always like to get an angle finder or you can get a protractor, either one will work. I put it at the very top of my pipe. You'll see that it's above my very first line because that's in a location where it hasn't been bent or, or messed with yet. Uh, the reason that I put it right before my very last bend, because whenever I start to bend, uh, I wanna control it going into that 90 zone. So we're watching our angle finder. It passed right over 90. That's why it's facing the other way now. I'm gonna give it one more little push and loosen. First thing we wanna do is verify that this thing is level because if it's not, it's not even worth checking if it's gonna work or not. Push the zero button, so zero is all the way out. Bring it up here to the top side of the pipe. 89.9, I'll take it. After that, we're gonna set it up and arrange it next to our other pipes. Now, if you remember, this was gonna be our outside pipe. with an inch of spacing in between all the other ones. And if you look, that spacing is mirrored throughout the whole bend and they all match each other with the exact same amount. Thanks for checking out our video, guys. We're gonna be coming up with more content. Uh, if you want any other tricks and tips or have questions, put them in the comments. Um, obviously, this doesn't cover everything with concentric bends, but this is a start. So uh, let us know what you think. Thanks guys.